Everyone, thanks for, thanks for skipping the keynote to be here. <laughs> Obviously, you know where your priorities are. Um, anyway, I'm Drew uh, Maliazzi. I'm the CEO and technical co-founder here at Admit Hub. And um, here with me is Scott Burke, the AVP of Admissions from Georgia State University. Thanks, Scott. Nice to be here. And um, we're just going to kick things off. Um, as, is, as I said, the keynote's still going on, so some people will stream in. Um, they don't know what they're missing, but you guys on the vanguard. Um, and basically, to give you an idea of what to expect today, uh, I'm going to have Scott tell his story. I'm going to ask him a few questions. Um, we're going to ask for some audience participation at some point, so get ready. Uh, you can't just fall asleep or get engrossed in your phone. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about AdmitHub. We're going to share the research results. We did a randomized control trial together. Um, and then uh, finally, we're going to do a live demo. You're going to get to meet Pounce personally, all on your phones. And actually, that's when you're supposed to get engrossed in your phone and ignore us completely. <laughs> um, that very rarely happens at a panel. So uh, we invite you to ignore us. And then we'll do some Q&A at the end. Um, just to answer any um, confusion or uh, any questions you guys have. Sound good? Sounds great. All right. Um, so Scott, kick, before we get started talking about uh, chatbots uh, and Pounce and, and MitHub, um, I want to know a little bit more about the culture of innovation at Georgia State. Or share with the audience. I know you guys are one of the leaders and a member of the University Innovation Alliance. So maybe tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. Uh, as Drew said, my name is Scott Burke. I'm the Associate Vice President and Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Georgia State University. Georgia State is a large, comprehensive research university located in the heart of Atlanta. We have more than uh, 32,000 students in our downtown locations, and we recently just merged with the largest uh, community college in the state of Georgia, so we now have more than 40,000 students. Uh, at, at the university. So we are the largest university in the state of Georgia. We are the most diverse university uh, in the state of Georgia, 15th uh, most diverse institution uh, in the nation. Uh, we were recently named by US News and World Report as the fourth most innovative university in the nation behind Arizona State University, MIT, and Stanford. And so we're very proud of that distinction. So we have a, a culture of innovation at Georgia State. We have uh, a president, um, a vice provost who I report to um, that is always looking for Georgia State to do the next best thing. And uh, so it's a very supportive culture from that standpoint. Yeah, and I believe you guys also wholly embrace, not only with us, but in other domains, research and specifically randomized control trials to really get into and understand the evidence of what works and what doesn't. Is, That's that, right. is that right? Yep, absolutely. And it, it have received a number of research grants. And I, I loved, and in fact, I think Dr. Rennick was presenting last week. Um, and I remember seeing the trending hashtag with respect to our work, uh, show the evidence. So. Um, yeah, our division alone in the last year has raised, I think, close to $40 million in research grants from wow. organizations like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Kresge, and so on. So we've been very fortunate as a division to, um, to receive a lot of funding to, for our initiatives. Wonderful. Um, so getting into more of the specifics of, of your role in uh, admissions in general, uh, can you tell the audience a little bit about the, the challenges you guys were facing in, in enrollment uh, before we met? Sure. So I, I am responsible for all new undergraduate students coming to the university. So I am responsible for overseeing two-year admission and four-year admission. And um, one of the things that we were seeing on the uh, bachelor's degree side was an increase in our summer melt. The percentage of students that we were losing from confirmation to actual enrollment. And at our height, we were somewhere around 18%, uh, which, is, which is very high. So we were seeing increases in enrollment in our first year students coming to the university. However, we should have seen larger increases in students. And because of the summer melt issue, we were not. Yeah, and to baseline uh, define summer melt for folks, uh, it's a situation where a student applies to college, gets admitted, says they will enroll, and then when September arrives, uh, they simply don't show up. Uh, nationwide, this is actually a pretty large problem. It's about 14% of students melt uh, and, and specifically do not go to college at all. Uh, it comes out to uh, almost 300,000 students every year. Um, so you guys Sorry. were right, ar uh, right around the national average. Um, but I believe, if memory serves, it had been creeping up 
Right. It had been since um, I arrived at, at Georgia State, and I arrived in, at Georgia State in 2008. We were around 8 percent, and then we started seeing an increase in our applicant pool, uh, more first-generation college students. Um, so we started seeing each year our uh, rate, our melt rate increase. And as I said, at the height, it was at 18 percent last year. And I'm, one of the uh, panelists who was supposed to be here uh, is our research partner, Dr. Lindsay Page. Um, who's amazing, literally wrote the book on Summer Melt, appropriately titled Summer Melt, uh, and Scott has his autographed copy right here. I always bring my visual. I yeah. always have to bring the visual. It's available for, I think, $19.95 on Amazon. We'll give Lindsay a little plug. It's a great read. Um, and actually, it was on the vanguard of not only this, the problem of Summer Melt, but this idea of uh, text message-based counseling, uh, of providing nudges, and support for students uh, and meeting them where they are on their mobile phones in the most minimal of interventions to get a, a really remarkable impact. Yeah, and she talks in, in the book, specifically what interested us in the book, uh, obviously, was the summer health issue and how we could um, go about um, developing strategies to decrease or, uh, our, our summer melt was that they had profiled Fulton County. Fulton County has had one of the largest summer melt issues in the nation. I think it was at its height around 20% of students who were intending to go to college didn't end up in college in that, during that first year. Um, so it, was, it, it had real practical application for me being uh, that a per, the largest percentage of our students come from the state of Georgia and one of the largest feeder counties was Fulton County for us. Interesting. And it's worth noting that these are very academically qualified students. Um, and the primary things that get in the way um, are the odd like logistics, uh, the FAFSA process, getting loans. And usually these are first gen students, uh, oftentimes minority students, people low coming income. from low income, underserved communities, who just don't have the support and guidance necessary to just overcome all the, the sort of nuances Areas. of the transition to college, yes. Um, and so you were familiar with Dr. Page before we met. In fact, I remember you, you saying, like, I have every book on my desk. <laughs> I think I even held up the book. Um, and so uh, I think you were considering, if memory serves, uh, a texting intervention because you realized the power of the medium. I just want to understand uh, what your considerations were at that time um, before talking to us. Yeah, so we knew from a strategic standpoint, we had to do something different. We were trying lots of different interventions throughout the course of the year, working closely with our financial aid office, doing more personalized outreach, more personalized communication via email. Um, we were, uh, our admissions counselors were uh, consistently on the road. They were uh, on the phones, answering their own emails, trying to assist students to the best to the best of their ability, but our volume each year was going up significantly, and it was hard to keep up with that volume. And so we had to find a way that we could have conversations with students that didn't require a lot of staff intervention. Um, I think this is a good opportunity to sort of set the stage for what set Admit Hub uh, apart from maybe the other providers that sort of Yeah, so we were looking at four to five other um, Text messaging, text, text messaging providers. Some were extremely expensive. They were just way out of our price range. Many of them didn't uh, have the ability for us to have a two-way conversation via text. And so that was our, one of our absolute requirements is we had to have the ability to have an ongoing dialogue with students via text, giving them nudges about FAFSA, giving them, uh, nudging them about other important steps in the enrollment process. And for the student to be able to say, well, this is a barrier for me because of X, Y, and Z. And so uh, when I was on the phone actually with Drew and Kirk talking about some other completely random other subject <laughs> matter, I was telling them about our summer melt issue, and they both stopped for a moment, paused, and said, we can help you. We're working on uh, a virtual assistant, I guess we can call it at this point in the, in the presentation, uh, that will help you alleviate the pressure on your staff and allow you to have those two-way conversations. Yes, exactly. And, and one of the things about text messages is um, oftentimes a nudge can be very powerful, but when you send someone a text, it's really an invitation to a conversation, I like to say. Uh, and oftentimes, I mean, at astounding rates, students reply. Uh, and I mean, think about if you, someone sent you a message and you replied with a question for them and they didn't respond for days, uh, you would feel that was a little bit rude. 
Uh, and in this age of instant gratification for the Generation Z, uh, we felt that meeting them where they are was essential and also being immediately responsive. Um, even if we didn't know the exact answer to their question, telling them that we would get someone on it and rest Yeah, it's assured. that right message at the right time, right, that's going to make the difference. And we see it all the time. A student will say, you didn't respond to me, so I chose to go to XYZ institution. And we just, we could no longer uh, have that, that, that uh, in our process. And so that's where Admit Hub and the building of the chatbot and the virtual assistant came really in. And this play. is where I give Scott a ton of credit because we presented him an insane idea uh, that Georgia State should be the first university uh, in the world to create their own virtual assistant uh, branded as their mascot, Pounce. And Pounce, whom you'll meet in a little bit, is a blue panther. He's very enthusiastic about Georgia State and quite knowledgeable as well. Uh, and uh, that would be the entity with which students would communicate, but also with the assurances that humans were there to support um, Pounce uh, if it didn't understand. I think you have to underline that, right? And yes. say that, you know, despite the fact that this is AI and a text messaging, it did still require us to have human beings watching and for the student at any point in the process of texting with Pounce, conversations with Pounce, that they could say, I would like to speak to a human being and we would get them to that, to that admissions counselor that was responsible for their territory. Exactly, and in terms of the, so we ended up starting this intervention uh, a little later than we would have liked. Uh, there were some logistical issues, but we started in April. Uh, and it ran through to September. Mm -hmm. And we ended up, just give you guys the rough stats, it was a randomized control trial. So uh, there were about 7,500 total people in the population. Half of them were placed in a control group, uh, and the other half, uh, a randomized half, were placed in the treatment group that got to talk to Pounce. Uh, we averaged about 80, I think it was 85 messages per person. So around 180 some odd thousand messages um, that were total exchanged. Uh, 50,000 of those were messages to Pounce. Um, and then uh, like overall, I think we had, just to cite some engagement numbers, we had 90% engagement. That means someone responded at least once. Um, we did have uh, approximately four or 5% in that ballpark opt out and another like five or six percent were wrong numbers. Um, people saying, who the heck do you think you're talking to? I'm a 40-year-old man, and I'm not going to Georgia State. In which case, we would stop messaging them. Um, Are you sure you don't want to go? Yeah. Um, but at this point, I wanted to get your two cents on just like how much time and effort was required from your staff to operate this, this process. So as Drew indicated, we did start the process a little bit later than we wanted to. And AdmitHub was great about setting clear expectations that with us starting this late in the process, we may not see uh, significant results, significant increases in enrollment, melt, et cetera, decreases in melt. Um, so we had a very realistic approach to this, right? Yeah. And as I mentioned earlier, one of, the, one of the key things that we wanted to make sure it would happen is that we could develop that relationship and keep, the, keep that engagement going through this whole melt cycle. And melt does not just start in the summer, right? Melt starts much earlier than that. Some will argue that it starts in January and February when students are starting to engage with the next steps in the enrollment process, those barriers that could be in place. And, Georgia State has about 30% of our admits that are first generation. Uh, we are very diverse, a very diverse applicant pool, a very diverse university. Uh, overall, we have, um, we're as diverse socioeconomically as we are racially uh, at, at Georgia State. And so we needed uh, to make sure that, uh, again, we could have those two-way conversations, we could keep that engagement going, and it didn't put a lot of extra strain and stress and pressure on the admissions counselors. And um, because we were already, in many ways, at capacity uh, with what they, they, they could ultimately handle. So we needed something that could alleviate some of that stress and pressure. Um, do you mind if I run yeah, through ahead. the math? Yeah, sure, go ahead, that'd I'm be great. Gonna, this is what the whiteboard is for. We can't have slides, so I'm just gonna, it's like I'm, I'm a math teacher. Um, if anyone else wants to check my math while I do it. Uh, so we had about 50,000 inbound messages. Um, and I would say, for the case of estimating this, 
if you're a superhero, you can handle about one message uh, in 30 seconds. And keep in mind, these me that's only if you're doing this nonstop go, go, go. Right. The messages kind of actually end up trickling in at all hours of the night. In fact, I think, Scott, we said the, the highest volume of messages came between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. and 10 p.m. and 1 a.m., which are the exact opposite hours. Oh, when, <laughs> when, when, when we're open? When, when we're you're working. working, exactly. So all told, um, this comes to about 417 uh, hours, um, hours of work. Or, I, I think if my math is correct, it's about 52 days, approximately, of nonstop work to handle all of these messages, oops, that's a Y, um, by hand, which we were able to automate and save your staff time. And probably realistically, instead of 30 seconds, this would be more like a, cup, a minute or two yeah, to exactly. handle each message, in which case we're talking about saving o over 100 uh, or maybe 200 days of realistic staff time. Yeah, and we have 11 admissions counselors dedicated to the recruitment of students to the four-year side of, of Georgia State University. So for us, if, if this is all that they were doing, I would have had to have easily hired anywhere between another and 10 to 15 admissions counselors, which from a budget standpoint was not, not realistic for us to be able to do. And um, I guess now's a good time to talk about the actual outcomes when it, with respect to the randomized control trial. Um, Normally, Lindsay would do this because this is her specialty, <laughs> and she's the one who analyzed all this. Um, but I'll just run down. Uh, we had incremental outcomes in pretty much every category we measured. Mm -hmm. And I will say that in terms of this research study, uh, as opposed to all of Lindsay's previous work, it was very exciting because we, uh, she had insight into the data on every intermediate step. Um, before, in previous studies, she would know what the student was, when the student had intended to enroll and whether they did enroll. And there was a hypothesis that it helped, the nudges helped in the middle, but they didn't know for sure. So we ended up boosting pretty much everything. Uh, orientation attendance went up 3.3%. Um, FAFSA verification, which means like you made a mistake on your FAFSA, uh, those, those mistakes in the FAFSA went down about 17%. Mm -hmm. Uh, loan counseling, people signing up for loan counseling went up 15%. Uh, loan acceptance was up 12%. On-time immunization was up 10%. On-time transcript sub submission was up 6%. And then the huge, like most important numbers, the m numbers that we cared most about were summer melt, which we dropped around 21%, and overall enrollment, which we increased about 4%. Mm -hmm. Um, and all told, what were the overall? Yeah, so that meant we had um, roughly about 300 more freshmen in the class this year compared to, compared to the previous year. And um, overall, the numbers, uh, so our melt was at 18%, it dropped down to 14%. Um, and we're still not happy there, and we're moving towards actually introducing pounce to the whole admitted class this year. We're not continuing on with the RCT because we were very impressed with the results that we got, and we decided that at this point it was time for us to roll this out to all of our admits. Yes. And right now we're up to 9,100 uh, admits with a goal of getting to about 9,500 admits to enroll a class of about 3,800 and 3,850. Brief side note for any entrepreneurs in the audience. <clears throat> uh, Doing an RCT with your first major partner uh, is also a recipe for sleepless nights and anxiety. <laughs> uh, and actually, oddly enough, when we started this intervention, <clears throat> we got together with Lindsay and Hunter and hypothesized what we thought the impact would be. Uh, and we ended up uh, about tripling what we expected yep. the results to be uh, based on the, the design of the intervention. So we were all obviously thrilled, and now I can finally sleep at night. Well, now I have a baby, so. Uh, I don't sleep, but eventually, in 18 years from now, I'll start and, sleeping again. And, and I, don't, I don't necessarily want to turn this into a commercial for Admit Hub, but I will say we have been more than pleased with our partnership. You notice I didn't say just relationship. Our partnership. This was a true partnership. This wasn't a uh, out-of-the-box, here's how you should do this. This was a lot of conversation and discussion between our staffs um, with uh, Drew and Kirk directly um, in developing this for Georgia State because as Drew said, we were taking the risk. Yes. Well, we were their first you, we're thinking. partner 
Uh, and as I said, we have a president who very much likes us to be able to say we are the first to do something. And so I, I, I you know, I, I would be lying if I didn't say I was very nervous, I was very scared to go into this um, untested waters. And that's one why we decided to do uh, the RCT, because we wanted to see, did this have an effect um, on uh, our, our enrollment and decre decreasing our, our summer melt. But so I was, I was nervous going into it. Uh, we were taking a, a huge risk of relying on a chat bot to carry on conversations with students. That made me initially very uncomfortable. Yes. Um, but we had seeded pounce with um, questions and answered. We started with about 200. 200 answers, 200 yes. answers, and we're up to about 1,300, almost 1,400 answers now. Um, and as nuanced as, can I bring a salamander into the uh, residence hall? What size tank uh, can it be? Yes. And uh, so on. So it, it's, it's those ran random nuanced types of questions that, that pounce is able to handle. Absolutely. In fact, actually, this is a good uh, opportunity to talk about some of the focus groups we did because not only did we get the exact enrollment outcomes we went to campus and talked to a lot of students after this to understand what their experience was and some people would say or, or would hypothesize that oh it, talking to a bot seems like it would be a impersonal like in, inhuman experience um, but oddly students said in some ways said the exact opposite and I, we found it very funny. They said things like, oh, I actually preferred that it was a bot <laughs> because I felt like I could ask questions without being judged. Uh, if I asked what I might be perceived as a stupid question, it wouldn't care, um, which is so interesting. And they also did say that they felt comforted by the fact that there were also humans there in, in case they needed additional help. Uh, and the stunning, this is the most stunning thing, we ended up sending on average about one message every 10 to 15 days yep. to a student. And we said, ideally in your perfect world, how many messages would you get? Um, and they actually the most common answer was I would get messages every day, which we were blown away by. So time to ramp up the volume, which we have done this year for sure. Um, but yeah, I'm curious. You know, we understand the student perspective on Pounce, and we had enormous satisfaction. We had, I think, 84% gave it, you know, five stars out of five. Yep. And um, I think more than 90% suggested that we use it again for the next year, um, which is very encouraging. And in fact, um, and from the university perspective, Dr. Rennick has also signed up to, for us to help assign Pounce to um, currently enrolled students, which we're working on right now. Yep. Uh, and we've even begun talking to students before they apply. Um, but I'm curious, uh, the question I had for you, Scott, is the staff's understanding and emotions toward Pounce. Like, how do they feel about having an AI chatbot on staff with them? They love it. <laughs> and in fact, they would like it to be open to more students. Right now, Pounce is a closed bot. Uh, you have to be invited to uh, interact with Pounce, and right now we are, on we are only doing that with our freshman class. Um, we are actually talking with Admit Hub and in the process of developing Pounce to become an open bot, where we can open it to the general public. Um, we, get, we experience, especially this time of year, significant call volume, and we need something to help us decrease that call volume. And so we've been talking with them about rolling this out, and the admissions counselors are ecstatic yes. about it because they know it's going to help with some of the volume that they're experiencing right now because a lot of the questions that they are getting are uh, the same question over and over mm -hmm. and it can, we already know it can be answered. It can be answered by Pounce. And as a matter of fact, you guys are going to be our quality assurance group uh, yep. because we will be demoing that feature in about 10 minutes uh, so all of you can meet Pounce directly on your phones. And let, let me add one more statistic that we didn't share. So uh, we said that Pounce handled roughly 91.5 or 91% um, percent of the questions. In the first year, the Admit Hub staff uh, who worked directly with us that we trained and had engagements with were assisting with some of the behind the scenes machine learning when Pounce didn't have the answer to a question. Mm -hmm. And so only 1%, less than 1%, 0.9% um, of the questions needed to go to one of our admissions counselors. So yes. that speaks, uh, I think, volumes um, in terms of why this was so uh, important for us to add, because we could have an AI chatbot that 
that was answering the majority of the questions for us, while our staff could focus on other things. That's a good point. And I, I think one of the points of pride we make at Admit Hub is meeting students where they are, particularly mobile phones, but also meeting your counselors where they are. Um, God knows uh, your staff needed nothing less than another dashboard or system to log That's into. Right. Um, and so we understood that very quickly. And so basically the way the system works uh, is when Pounce gives an answer, uh, if you log into our administrative dashboard, you can see everything. And occasionally he will say, oh, I, I don't understand the answer to that question. I've never seen that before. I'll get a human on it. And at that point, rather than forcing someone on your staff to log in and answer, what we did is we met them in the place that they were doing most of their work, which was their email inbox. And we simply sent them an email uh, with the question, a bit of context about the student, and the chat history. And in order to respond to that student, all they had to do was reply to the email. We'd route it to the student via text message. And then we'd have the opportunity to review this question and new answer and decide, is this something that we want to automate in the future? And doing that process, I think your staff over the course of the, you know, from April to September handled almost like six or 700 of those emails. Yep. Yep. Uh, but um, in doing so, augmented the knowledge base by almost 1,000 understandings. Uh, and basically, any time you do that, that's the last time you'll ever need to respond to that single question. That's right. Um, also understanding, by the way, that there are many questions that we did understand that are not appropriate for handling in an automated fashion. And the, bu the bulk of what we do is handling those process and status questions. But when we find these diamonds in the rough, these students saying, I'm the first person in my family to go to college. I've dreamed of going to Georgia State for years, but I'm not sure we can afford it. Can you please help me? Those are the ones that we send directly to you guys and say, you know, pick up the phone and call this person um, because they need your help. And you can do that, your staff can do that without worrying about their, one, their inbox exploding yep. <laughs> while they don't give it any attention. Um, and two, just being able to like find more joy in the work rather than having to like deal with the overwhelming process and status questions. Um, so surfacing the, the real, uh, like I said, diamonds in the rough that need your attention. Yeah, and, and the, the other side of that too was when a student tells us, uh, we, we do, we, so at Georgia State we don't have a deposit. We have an intent to enroll uh, process and form that we send out to students and we can now do this over text messaging. And one of the things that we wanted to collect from um, students was how they were feeling, uh, what was the, their temperature or their interest uh, in Georgia State, and we collect that information and we give that back to an admissions counselor, and especially when a student is lukewarm to very cold or tells us out directly, I'm not planning to come to Georgia State and this is why. And I never want it to be a financial barrier that's in the way, or I never want it to be a uh, non-responsive uh, reason that the, the student isn't coming. So that's why we set it up this way so that a counselor could immediately reach out to that student, and, and in some cases, in very real time. In, very in a very quick time fashion then, whereas before we would get the information, it would download into the CRM system, you'd have to build a filter to find these students who said they weren't coming. That was labor intensive, and mm. it would take a while for a, for, for a counselor to get through that list of students, whereas now we can get them almost pretty much real time and, and engage with them. And I'm very fortunate too, because I actually have a financial liaison in our office, Tony Wahab, who's amazing. He came from the enrollment services uh, prior to coming for admission, so he has such an extensive background knowledge of the financial aid process that all of those questions can go immediately, immediately to him. He can look at their aid package, he can triage it, he can reach out to the financial aid staff. Are they eligible for more aid? Is there other th things that we can do for the student? And we can do it, again, in much more real-time fashion. By the way, Tony deserves a medal because <laughs> when we do this tr uh, email to SMS bridge, we also track all the engagement so we know uh, how fast your counselors are responding. Right. I mean, Tony, by the way, did like 200 messages himself yep. uh, and in record time. Sure. That guy is a champion. <laughs> uh, hopefully he's watching this video at some point <laughs> in the future. Um, and, and I would say, I wanna stress, like oftentimes people ask me, what is this technology? Is there an app I need, I need to download? Um, and, I, and it's also sometimes a little confusing to explain that like what this technology is, um, this AI that is behind the scenes is truly invisible. And the purpose of it is not to solve all problems. The purpose of this technology is to get, well, one, handle anything it can, but two, get to a situation where the technology can disappear. Like, that is my goal. My goal is not to 
like be the end all, be all of the student support. The goal is to help people do the meaningful work that only the people can do and enable them to do it all the time. Yeah. Um, and that's the reason you got into the business in the first place. Mm -hmm. Your goal wasn't to handle endless email FAQs all day. Your goal was to help students in a meaningful way. Uh, and so it, in essence, the, the technology is only there when you need it and it's gone when you don't. Um, in fact, uh, might be a fun time to, sure. if anyone, anyone in the audience have a cell phone. <laughs> Perfect, actually I'm gonna take a quick poll before we do this. Um, <laughs> so show of hands, how many of you have unread emails in your inbox? Does anyone have any unread emails? This guy has no unread, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up if you have more than 20 unread emails. How about more than 50? How about more than 100 unread emails? 200? I haven't checked mine today. I don't even want to know. Oh my God, you have more. I, I don't even want to know how many emails yeah, you have in your no, inbox. It's ridiculous. 500. There's still people with their hands up. I don't want to know anymore. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, next question. Uh, raise your hands if you have any unread text messages on your phone right now. Okay, we have four hands. <laughs> how many wow. people have more than five unread text messages right now? More than 10 unread text messages? That's what I thought. Uh, and you're not teenagers. Um, and teenagers skew the technology of email and embrace the simplicity and minimalism of texting and messaging. Uh, and I should say that our technology works on any messaging platform um, that has an API. We could communicate with students over text message, Facebook Messenger, Skype, um, you name it, Kick Messenger. You name a messaging platform and give me the API documents and in eight hours I'll have it up and running. Um, so the idea is that it's nimble. It's, it's about text message because that's one of the great means of communicating with students at scale today, but we can be wherever they are uh, at any moment. And um, we were talking about this this morning. Um, so Drew's team had access to our CRM system. That's right. right? Because this is where the data and information needed to happen. And we needed these, in some ways, to be triggers, right? So mm -hmm. if a student didn't complete the FAFSA yet, if they have not submitted their FAFSA, we needed that information to go back and forth between the two systems, well, to go into their system to set up the communication flow. And we set up over 90 communication flows that mirrored what we were already doing via email. Yes. And it was in our language, which again is the, the, the other beauty of this, you know, Pounce takes on the personality, the chatbot takes on the personality of the university, takes on the personality of your communication. So when you go into this with Admit Hub, that's how they will structure uh, their chatbot ultimately for you. And, um, and so we needed, we needed the ability for them to be able to see this information, again, almost real time. Yes. Uh, so that we could get these communication flows going with these students um, in a timely manner to make a difference. And this means if you're triggered or flagged for FAFSA verification or having an incomplete application or any number of things that you need to do that we have the data on, we would trigger a message immediately. Uh, also, it wasn't just about stuff you have to do that's really boring and lame. Right, sure. Uh, if you finish the FAFSA and you are flagged FAFSA complete, you get the animated GIF of Tina Fey making it rain money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or a, a, any number of animated GIFs. In fact, this year, Scott and his staff created an animated GIF uh, to actually tell students they'd been admitted, and it was a huge success. Yeah. Yeah, in, in it fact, was a reverse video of confetti, right? Yes. I mean, it was hilarious yeah, exactly. that, and that I, our students did. It was really fun. I believe this was the first, you were the first time students had been notified of being admitted to a university over text message, and certainly by text message and animated and, GIF. And, I think animated <laughs> GIF. I'm not sure by text message, but definitely by, an, I believe, an animated GIF. Yeah. Um, so quick show of hands. Anybody want to try this in the audience? Who wants to meet Pounce? Oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. A lot of you. All right, so I'm going to write down Pounce's phone number um, for a good time, text, um, and this is a local <laughs> Georgia State, uh, a local Atlanta area code um, for anyone who's curious. So standard text message uh, rate supply. Standard rate Just supply. So we can be clear, and he'll tell you that, but. Well, actually, we are bypassing okay, good. that. We, we made a special workflow for ASU GSV that's a little bit different. Great. Um, so all you have to do is say, hello, and four zero. Can you guys read this? Four zero four 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 five. 
This is like the only time when any presenter is like, please ignore me for the next 10 minutes and stare at your phones. <laughs> Um, and but essentially what you're going to experience is the same thing students experience. You're going to be introduced to a workflow. Um, it's sort of like a text message drip campaign. We made a very simple one for you guys, which is pretty linear. But oftentimes these are choose your own adventure stories over text message, where depending on what you say and answer, we will take you in dramatically different directions. Um, Did you give the rest of the number? Oh yeah, so 404 445 4069 uh, is the phone number. And uh, yeah, yeah, messaging rates will apply. Uh, but I think I, I read a stat recently that 90% of US mobile phone users have unlimited text messages anyway. Yep. Um, and actually, I'm going to give you some other like pretty interesting stats uh, about engagement. Can we get text below or something? Say anything you want, except a swear. He gets very, Pounce doesn't like swears. He might be it's offended. It's the only time he'll get a little ornery. Uh, with you. Other than yeah. that, he's pretty, uh, he's pretty chill. Yeah, exactly. I might ignore you. Or some, <laughs> sometimes, yeah. like, chastises people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Androgynous panther. Yeah, I, I often refer to it as it. I mean, sometimes we, we have the habit of saying a male, but... Um, G, the androgynous pronoun, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, I, actually, we have our own bot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, we have our own chatbot, Ollie, and at, at some point in one of the surveys, we ask, you know, are you, how, what gender do you identify as, male, female, or other? Um, and if you say other, the bot is like, me too, <laughs> which is, I think, encouraging. Um, in any event, <clears throat> while some of you are fiddling with your phones, um, answering the questions, uh, <clears throat> it will prompt you to ask some questions about financial aid and really anything. Feel free to test the limits, uh, but try and embody the sense of a student. Um, I'll give you an example. One time we did a demo for a university. I can't remember what university it was. And they asked, like, who is the president of the university At the, to pounce? And it didn't know the answer. And I was like, no student has ever thought to ask that <laughs> of the hundreds of thousands of messages we've handled. Yeah. Yeah. And I should say, since this intervention where we, were, we, we handled 50,000 inbounds, um, I mean, we, I think last month we did, I think I told you, over 300,000 messages. Um, so we've, we're doing right now with Georgia State every month the equivalent to what we did entire all of last season. Um, but while you guys are texting away, um, does anyone have any questions? Uh, and since we're not going to pass a mic around, I'm just going to repeat them for folks. But what you're experiencing right now is essentially what a student will see um, when they engage with Pounce. Um, for all intents and purposes. So any questions from the audience? It's a little... Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the question is, uh, what percentage of the message flow is uh, fun instead of necessarily right on task? And I would encourage you all to uh, maybe ask if Pounce is a believer. Uh, that, that's a shorthand for Justin Bieber fan. Um, and uh, I think we have the term of art in the industry is an Easter egg. I think we have about 100 Easter egg understandings. Um, you can ask about uh, Hal, I think, from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Um, you can ask a lot of fun things. You can even ask it after you've told it your name, who am I? And it will know your name and say, of course, I know who you are. Um, <laughs> And so, yeah, there, there are fun things to find. Um, we don't have quite as many as Siri just yet, um, but you can say, tell me a story, tell me a joke, uh, and we'll get you some things <laughs> in, in each of those instances. Uh, I thought there was another question. But well, we did, let me, oh, yeah. and, and let, me just, let, me, let me add on to that response, too, because we can see the chat conversation, so we, yes. we have access to the chat conversations. And you can see students who are trying to beat Pounce in some way, yes. shape, or form into submission. And <laughs> um, Thank God it's not your staff. <laughs> I know, thank goodness. I, 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 that would be awful. It would be awful. Um, you know, Drew alerted to earlier that, you know, Pounce doesn't like any swears, nasty language. Um, in some cases, might not respond or might give you a curt response back uh, for that. But we've seen lots of students have a lot of fun and ask just completely silly, random 
uh, things, um, and yes. he handles it very, very well. And our goal... It handles it very well. Our goal is to bring joy to this experience. It's, it's very difficult to make the transition to college, and there's a lot of stuff to do. Mm -hmm. And if we can delight you along the way and build this relationship, uh, um, that's almost as important as getting you through whatever process you're in the midst of. And the other, the other thing that we, we want to do with this going forward, and, and Drew and I literally were just talking about this as we were walking in uh, and getting ready for the session, is we don't want this to always just be about process-oriented things either. Right. So we're creating some uh, GIFs on uh, uh, um, things we think students should know about the university, whether it's our rankings or what makes Georgia State unique, some of our student success things that we're being lauded for. So we're working on that to add this in because we had a couple of students, Christina and Kat from uh, Drew's staff came to campus uh, a month ago to attend some of our uh, admitted student events, one of our honors events in our mm. uh, Success Academy. And they had an opportunity to meet with somewhere around 15 or 20 students um, over the course of that two-day time period. And what we kept hearing over and over from a lot of the students is something that Drew alluded to earlier is they want more engagement and yes. more interactions. And by the way, sometimes they forget Pounce is there. Yes. And so we need to, t from time to time, remind them a little bit more. So we thought adding this uh, brand kind of communication flow in the midst to kind of a, as a way to nudge them and remind them, hey, Pounce is here. And by the way, continue to ask him it questions. Exactly. Any other que Speaking of, yeah, there's a question up here. So someone is asking the other extensions that we can do for this technology outside of the university. Uh, or outside of just admissions, admissions yeah. right? Um, well, the obvious next step, which we've begun with you guys uh, in West Texas, is, um, is helping with retention, uh, keeping students on track, persisting them, uh, both from fresh, freshman to sophomore year, and then ultimately all the way through to graduation. And I will say we're piloting that, and that is our next randomized control <coughs> trial, uh, which will be kicking off in September uh, with the same researchers. And uh, that's probably must, much more exciting, but I also will admit that is, it's probably an order of magnitude more complex a problem. Uh, the ins and outs of why people fail to continue and persist in college is, um, is, pro is quite misunderstood right now. In fact, oddly, I I've heard a stat that something like 65% of people who drop out of college are, are passing all their classes and doing well academically. And so oftentimes it's life getting in the way, emotions, and quite honestly, we've never had to deal with any of these with, with you guys yet, thank goodness, um, but dealing with a student who um, is, you know, expresses depression or, or even suicidal right. behavior um, or intentions. Uh, right now what we do is we recommend they uh, try the text alert, uh, text crisis line, which if you, any of you are unfamiliar with this, it's an amazing organization staffed by Good Samaritans who are always there to talk people uh, through difficult, challenging situations where they're uh, either in harm's way or thinking of harming themselves um, all over text message anonymously. And I think it, it, it really makes sense for that to be the next phase for, for Admit Hub in terms of retention and progression. And I think one of the main reasons too is we know that students are asking, am I gonna be able to continue chatting with Pounce That's as true. a continuing student? So we know they wanna do it. And so it certainly made a lot of sense for it to continue to that next phase. Yeah, as they, I mean, they've grown up in some, to some <laughs> degree with Pounce uh, through their entire enrollment process to a degree like that's just what you do. Yep. Like they don't know any different. Um, and it becomes quite a habit. Any other questions? Yes. So at the uh, 15 most diverse uh, colleges in the country, how many languages does Pong speak? Uh, so the question <laughs> is how, many, question, by the how way. many languages does Pounce speak today? Um, right now, Pounce speaks one language, English, but is able to understand um, a diversity of language. Um, but can only respond in English, uh, and only under, and only it, it couldn't understand like a full Spanish uh, sentence yet. Um, that is certainly on our roadmap. Um, and the two most frequently requested languages uh, from us are, are Spanish and Chinese. Um, but actually, and actually, there's wonderful technology out there to be able to train a language model in multiple languages, detect the language someone is speaking, and respond to them properly. Um, 
in fact, the, it's built on the same framework and open source libraries that Google Translate uses, which I don't know if you've used Google Translate lately, but there have been enormous leaps and bounds in its, in its accuracy and effectiveness. Um, <clears throat> and those are some of the technological breakthroughs we'll be piggybacking on to bring more diversity uh, and uh, yeah, that, that's a direction we would love to go, yes. considering our international population continues to grow. Um, the, the number of students that come with us speaking another language is significant. So it, you're, you're, it's a very fair question, and it's a direction we would love to, we would love to head. We, we need to get this right first, and we are. Yes. Um, and so, uh, as, as Drew said, in the roadmap for them and, and, and potentially for us, we'd love to be able to add additional languages. Yeah. So someone wants me to talk about technology, and I, I, I told myself I wouldn't get too deep in the weeds. <laughs> but I'm going to see if I can do it in, in two minutes. Uh, what we use uh, under the hood is a statistical model of language. Uh, we, we train our models using TensorFlow, which is an open source convolutional neural network framework. Um, and essentially what you do is you feed it a language, just raw language, and it understands uh, the relationships between words, and is actually able to assign a value. And a value is in the form of a vector, which is a line with a direction and a magnitude. And each word gets its own vector. And this embedded in this vector is the true meaning of the word. And this is the, an astounding breakthrough in the development of natural language understanding that is just a few years old uh, and has seen major advancements in the last uh, 12 to 18 months. And basically, with this vector, you can say something like king minus man plus woman, and you will get the vector for queen. Uh, you can also string these together uh, and get the meaning of a sentence by adding the vectors sequentially. And the amazing part is, if you do this with language, um, and you can do it with multiple languages and uh, align these vectors, you can actually create the same language model in multiple languages, so it is able to understand the same sentence in Chinese and the same sentence in English. And quite honestly, I could probably train a language model to do this without even knowing Chinese myself, mm. um, which is the true magic of this technology. Um, but beyond that, I, I don't want to get into too much detail because I, I feel people's heads might, <laughs> or eyes would start rolling. Um, I saw another hand over here, yes. Yes. Frustration of not getting a response. What were the major frustrations that came out, and how salient were they for the customer? So I'll, I'll take the uh, graduate question yeah, if the, you want to take the, yeah, the, the, the second half. Yeah, let's rephrase it, uh, repeat it. So uh, the question is, what application would this potent, could this potentially have on, on the graduate level, right? Um, I'm talking with uh, our, currently our director of graduate admissions. Georgia State is moving to a centralized model of graduate admissions, and I think they could really benefit uh, from, from this technology in terms of being able uh, to reach out because they're not starting with a large marketing staff um, at the university in terms of those admissions counselors and others that can respond and reach out. And I think having this as a tool right off from the bat would, would, would set them uh, off in a very, very positive and good direction. So I think from the graduate level, this has uh, amazing possibilities for those of you that are in the graduate admission side as well because students are hungry for information and knowledge and getting it quickly. So yes. It doesn't matter if you're an undergrad or grad, I believe. I might add that it's actually pretty nice for people who are working because you might not have the ability to check your personal email during the day, and it's a very minor uh, outreach. So it's basically very atomic, and you can do it in minutes and space it out however you like. You asked about the frustrations. Um, and I think the challenge with any technology, if, for those of you who are fiddling with it right now, is that it's new, and uh, it's a very minimalist interface, so we have to teach you to work with it, uh, and people have to just learn the best way to talk to a bot. And, and that tends to be asking short questions and not like long convoluted things. It gets very confused if you ask two or three questions at once. If you string multiple long messages together, 
it gets a little confused. Uh, and that's obviously places where we want to take the technology to be even better. Um, but yes, uh, it's mostly about figuring out also how a staff like yours can work together and get the cumulative effects of this. Uh, so it's an augmentation. Uh, the AI can't work alone. Uh, and your staff obviously does amazing work, but has an almost an impossible volume That's of right. communication to handle. And by putting these together and making them truly a collaborative process and learning how this fundamentally reshapes an organization, which we've touched on a little bit with you guys, but I think as we go more and more into this process, we will learn the, the foundational elements of what a, an office with an AI as a core component uh, truly needs to operate as. Yeah, and, go, and going into this understanding the populations that you want to use it for, what's the strategic reasons you're, you're, you're utilizing a chatbot, a, a, a virtual assistant, and um, setting uh, reasonable and clear goals and expectations for exactly. this. Exactly. Uh, that's all the time we have for today. If you have more questions, you can ask me or Scott or Pounce uh, at your <laughs> convenience. Um, thank you all so much. Thank I really you. Appreciate it.